Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your entire blog post cards clickable in Elementor. This is a common problem that a lot of people have, but there's a quick and easy fix for it. I'll show you four different methods you can use, and I'll also point out drawback of one of the methods that is highly recommended by a popular content creator in the WordPress ecosystem. So if you're tired of people clicking around in different areas of your blog post only to find out that it's not leading them anywhere, then this video is for you. Stick around and learn how to make your blog post cards clickable in just a few minutes. For today's video, we'll be using the Elementor blog as our inspiration. So now, let's see how we can recreate this very nicely laid out blog post. So here we are on the page that we need to edit. Let's create a new container. Then we'll drop in our loop grid widget. Next thing we want to do is to create a new template for the loop grid. Let's save the page. Now over here, let's drop in a new container to wrap the entire contents. So we'll click on the flex box as well and we we'll use the column layout. On the container, set the padding to zero. We don't have any space in between. Next, we'll now drop in all our widgets that are necessary. So start with the featured image widget. Then next, we'll add in our post title. Since we already have an H1 tag here, the next tag will be the H2 because we have to make it in sequence. Now we can style it. So let's go under style and typography. I'm just going to use one I already created. Usually I would recommend you always creating different styles that you use for different areas already so that you have a consistent look. And whenever you want to change it, you just have to change it from one area and it will change across the entire website. Next, we'll add in our excerpt widget. As you can see, it's blank because this is a demo post and it has no excerpt but we can pull in the post content to create our excerpt, which is a new feature that Elementor brought in their recent versions. So you click on the wrench icon and then it take you to this pop-up where you can add in the excerpt length. we we'll say we want it to be 25 characters and then we want to pull it from the post content. So then it pulls in the text from the post content. Next, we also just reduce the text a bit. So let's go under typography and I'll just create a new one. You should already have one for your content, but for this demo, I'm just going to create a random one. And then I'll probably save it as card body text. So now that we have these ones, the final thing is to use the post info widget to add in our author, post date, and other information that we want. So let's drag in the post info widget. First thing we want to do is unlink all of them and we will remove the icon from the date as well. So icon, we don't want any icon. For the comments, we can leave the comments there. We don't need the time, so let's take away the time. Remember to also unlink it as well. Save. So now we have a design that is relatively looking like what we have for the Elementor page. Now let's see how can we make the entire blog post to be clickable. The easiest method, which is the first method I'm going to show you, is you can come over to the container, go over to layout, and under additional options, you see where you can change the HTML tag. Change it from default to link, to a link. Next, you add in with the dynamic tag the post URL because we want to link it to the blog post. So now let's update it. And there you have it. We've created our first design. And now let's preview it on the front end. As you can see on the front end, now the entire card is clickable. So anywhere around the card is clickable. But now straight away, you notice the first problem. The first problem is the colors. It inherits the link color from your site settings. So to fix this problem, you now have to go over to each of the items and change the colors. Previously, with the sections and columns, all you had to do was go over to the section and add in your link color. But now with containers, it, that no longer exists. So you have to go to the heading, 
set the text color to what you want. For each of them, you have to set the text color to what you want. The post info as well. Go to text and then color. When you save it and preview on the front end, you'll notice that now everything looks okay. But there is no visual identification that we are hovering over this card. So we can add a border or a box shadow to the card. So when we hover over it, it shows that border. So let's go back to our card, to the container, under style. We can go over to borders and then set it to have a border on normal state and on hover state. So on the normal state, we just give it a solid border, two pixels, and set the color to a transparent color. Because we don't really need a border for the main color, only when we hover. So on the hover state, we do the same thing. Solid, two pixels, then we set it to maybe a blue color. Let's just give it a random blue color. Then we save that. We can preview on the front end. Now you see, when you hover over it, it gives you a nice visual representation to know that you're hovering over the card. So now let's introduce some of the downsides to this method. The first downside to using this method is that you cannot add multiple links into your card. Once you have multiple links in the card, it breaks the entire layout because you cannot have a link within a link. The second downside is that it reads the entire card information to the screen readers before it informs them that that's a link, which is not a pleasant experience for screen reader users. So now let's test it out. So first, let's test it out using the screen reader. So now we have our screen reader open. Now let's test the link. How to make entire block card. Proper landmark region graphic HTML landmark regions. What are they and how to use them? Heading level 2 introduction HTML landmark regions are a way to identify important sections of a web page. They are used by assistive technologies, such as screen readers, list Dabden 34 the 23rd of June, 2023 no comments visited link. So it's read the entire content of this blog card before it told us that it's a visited link. So for someone who is relying on a screen reader, that is too much information before he knows that it's actually a link that he can click. All he needs to know is what is the heading of this card and how can I get to the link? That's all he needs to know when he uses the tab key because he's navigating through links. He doesn't want to be navigating through your entire content. If he wants to navigate through an entire content, then he can use other shortcut keys to read through your entire content. But using the tab key, all he wants to know is the title of the link and how he can get there. The second problem with the multiple links, let's see how it is. So let's go back to the page and now we'll try to link maybe the author. So let's go over to the post info content. And for the author, let's toggle the link option on so we can go to the archive page of that post author. Let's update it and then see how it now looks on the front end. So now on the front end, you can see now everything looks weird because when you hover, you can now notice the difference. The card has been broken away from the author because you cannot have a link within a link. So it has now created two different links, one for the card and the other for the author because unfortunately you cannot have a link within a link in HTML. So how can we actually fix this problem? One way we can do that is by going back to the old school method and link what needs to be linked. So the image, the title, if it needs to be linked, we give it a link and then we take the link from the entire card. This is something that is done even in Elementor. As you can see, the heading is linked as well as the post image, but the rest of the content doesn't have any link. So how can we achieve that? All we have to do is go back to our card and then edit the container and take away the link from the container. So go over to layout, advanced options, and then we change the HTML tag from A this time we change it to an article because usually blog posts use an article tag. So let's update that. Then let's link the image to the post URL. So custom URL and set it to the post URL. Same with the title. Go to content and then the dynamic tag post URL and we'll update that. When we preview that on the front end, you can see 
the featured image has its URL, the post title has the URL, but the content doesn't have a URL and we can select our content and then the author also has his URL and that fixes most of the problems. But as usual, there's a downside. So the downside to this method is that it creates redundancy. So right now, the image and the heading both link to the same place and for screen readers, it will read both of them as individual links, which can be quite confusing to some screen readers. So we'll test it out on the front end and see how it looks. So now, landmark, proper landmark region graphic visited link. It read proper, proper landmark region, region visited link. Cause that's the alt text I put for the image. So it read the image is alt text and then that's it. Then the next one. HTML landmark regions. What are they and how to use them? Visited link heading level two. It reads the heading as one link, the image as another link. Then with three items dabbed and 34 link. It now reads the author as a separate link. So that can be a bit confusing to screen readers because the first two links are leading to the same place, but it reads them as separate links. So with this method, we've eliminated the problem of having multiple links within the card, but we've introduced a new problem, which is having redundant links within the card and which is confusing to screen readers. So now here comes the popular method that is used by a lot of content creators, the heavily push this method, and it's called the pseudo element method. So for this method, let's get rid of all the links and then we'll start again. So set everything back to none. So for this method, we only link the heading to the post URL. Then we apply a pseudo element to the heading, which will cover the entire page, which you can do by using custom CSS because there's nothing like pseudo elements in Elementor. So we we'll go over to custom CSS and then we'll drop in some custom CSS. All we have to do is add in some class names on the layout, set the CSS class to DD main link and the card, we'll set it to DD link card. The drawback to this method is that Elementor adds a position relative to all their elements. So it makes it difficult for you to use this method. You have to literally go back and then add a position static to all the elements, which is what I did in this CSS. If you go to the custom CSS, you see all I did was target everything within the link card and give it a position static. But then I also had to make sure that the elements that are used by Elementor for the edit screen, I had to take them off as well. So now you can test it on the front end, update it. You can see now again that when we hover, everything is linked to the proper link and we can add as many links as we want into the page. So let's go to the post info widget, then add in a link to the author. I don't know if you noticed that I tried to click on things in the page, but I couldn't click on anything. That is one of the drawbacks with this method that you cannot really click on anything again. Everything is covered by the pseudo element because the pseudo element sits at the front of everything within the card. So you cannot click on anything. You have to use the navigator to be able to navigate through the elements. So for the post info widget, when you go to author, you can now link and the link still works. The downside to this method is you cannot click on the link unless you give it a Z index. So let's first test it to the front end. You see update, you see, Although the entire card is linked and then it doesn't break, but you cannot click on the link. The only way to click on this link is that you have to give this link a Z index that is higher than the post title. So let's go back to the card and then for the post info widget, just go to advanced. The Z index, we give, set it a Z index of even just two. Update it and test it out. Now we can see that we can click on other links, but this is where the problem arises. The now that I've given the post info widget a Z index, now whenever I go over the text, the link, there's no longer any link. The links are not clickable. This is a method that is highly publicized by popular content creators like Kevin Geary and so many other ones who are in the Bricks community. But as you can see from the demo that although you're able to solve the problem of being able to add multiple links to the card, you cannot actually click on those links unless you start giving them a Z index. And once you give them a Z index, sometimes it can affect some other things in the page, especially for Elementor users. For Bricks users, it may not be a problem, but 
there is a problem that affects both Elementor users and Bricks users. You cannot actually highlight on the text. So all the text becomes unclickable. You cannot drag, you cannot highlight, you cannot do anything you want on the text. You see, with any other method, you'll be able to highlight text, but with this method, you cannot highlight text. I'll show you that even on his own page, you can you might say I'm, I'm the one who is not doing it properly, but even on his own web page is the same problem you will also face that you cannot highlight any text. If you try to highlight, it gives you the error symbol, so you cannot highlight text. But every other thing works properly. You can put a Z index and be able to hi highlight links. So if you want to be able to highlight the text, you can also give that text a Z index. So let's show you the example using the navigator. Let's go to post excerpt and give that a Z index of whatever value we want. Let's see, three, four. But now when we go back to the front end, you see, although the text is selectable, you cannot actually click on it. It no longer becomes a link. It's now stuck as editable text because the link is on the pseudo element. So that's the major problem that you have with this method. If you don't have excerpt that you want people to copy, then this method is the best for you. you there's no problem. But when you want people to be able to select on your text to improve accessibility, then this doesn't work for those users as well. So this just goes to show that there's always a drawback to every method. But now I'll show you a fourth method which solves this drawback, and that is using JavaScript. So let's head back to our page, and then we'll we take off all the links again as well. So let's return the z-index back to normal. Let's take off all the z-index and everything we added. Now we have the link on only the post title as well as the author. So now let's do a couple of steps. First, we'll give the container a class name. We'll also give the post title a class name. So we'll leave it as that. Then next, we'll apply some JavaScript. The link to the JavaScript will be in the description below. I got it from CSS Tricks. But now let's see how it looks on the front end. So now on the front end, you can see there is the hover state as usual that we had before. It also has the link is clickable. Let's test it out. We click on it. Anywhere on the page, it will go to the link. If you click on any part of the page, it goes to the link. We also have the drawback no longer there whereby we can select any text we want. And it will be selected. We can copy the text and do whatever we want with the text. If we want to click on the other link, which is this link, you see the link is still worked. So it solves the problem of multiple links as well as selection. But the drawback is that it uses JavaScript. Some people may not like to use JavaScript. And we can also test how it sounds with the screen reader. Clickable HTML landmark regions. What are they and how to use them? So it says... Visited link heading level 2. It already tells you that it's clickable. And then it gives you the, just the title of the, of the link. And it get, tells you that it's the heading level 2. And visually, you can see that it highlights the entire blog post which is slightly different from when you're using the pseudo element method. On focus state, when you're using the tab key, it will not highlight the blog post. It will only highlight the link. But with this method, it will highlight the entire blog post. The reason why the link is highlighted right now is because of NVDA. NVDA tries to highlight links for better visual experience. But if I turn off the NVDA, you see it no longer shows the focus state on the link. It shows on the entire card because is the entire card that's clickable. And then when you tab again, it goes to just that dividend link. So you can have dividend link as well as the entire card all having their proper states. So now that we've gone through all the different methods of how you can create a complete blog card to be clickable, which method do you think is the best? And if you have a better method, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like, share this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.